welcome back to the third episode of The Case Files. Once again, we are your hosts, Jacob Doherty. And Georgia Shear. And without further ado, let's take a closer look at the true crime case of Billy Milligan, the man with 24 alternate personalities. Before we begin, know this episode details accounts of assault and violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Billy Milligan was an American man who gained notoriety in the 1970s for being the first person to be acquitted of a major crime due to the diagnosis of multiple personality disorder. In October 1977, Milligan was arrested for the kidnapping and rape of three women on the campus of Ohio State University. The women reported that they were abducted at gunpoint and taken to an abandoned building where they were repeatedly assaulted over the course of several hours. Milligan was identified as a suspect based on the description provided by one of the victims, who had managed to escape and call for help. After his arrest, Milligan initially denied any involvement in the crimes, but later confessed to the kidnappings and rapes. Milligan's defense team argued that he was not fully responsible for the crimes due to his diagnosis of multiple personality disorder, disorder, now known as dissociative identity disorder, which they claimed caused him to quote-unquote switch into different personalities who committed the crimes. The case went to trial, and after a lengthy legal battle, Milligan was found not guilty by the reason of insanity and was committed to a mental institution for treatment. Milligan spent several years in various mental health facilities before he, re- he was released in 1988. He went on to live a relatively quiet life, but continued to struggle with his mental health until his death in 2014. Milligan's case received widespread media attention, and he became the subject of a best-selling book called The Minds of Billy Milligan by Daniel Keyes, as well as a TV movie called The Faces, The Three Faces of Eve, named after an earlier famous case of DID. Milligan claimed to have over 20 distinct personalities or alters, each with their own unique characteristics, mannerisms, and memories. These personalities included a 14-year-old girl named Adelana, a Yugoslavian named Reagan, and an angry, violent person named Arthur. Milligan's defense team argued that he had no control over his actions during the kidnapping and rape because it was committed by one of his alters. The prosecution, however, argued that Milligan was faking his disorder in order to avoid prison. Ultimately, Milligan was found not guilty by reason of insanity and was committed to a mental institution for several years. Some experts have criticized the way Milligan's case was handled, arguing that it set a dangerous precedent by allowing people to use a diagnosis of DID as a quote-unquote get-out-of-jail-free card. Others have pointed out that the case has helped raise awareness to DID and other mental health issues as well. It paved the way for more nuanced understandings of the disorder in later years. Before we begin today, we'd like to note that this conversation could be controversial to some people, but we will be taking both sides of the arguments presented. So our first topic of discussion is about whether or not it should be justified to plead insanity. I think that this could definitely be taken either way, right, Georgia? There's a lot of conversation and conflict, that, and I think that's why we chose to do this episode regarding this topic, because that's what makes his case significant. Mm-hmm. And I do have to wonder, would this take place today? Like, would we... I mean, especially in the age of, like, social media and everything. <laughs> Would I mean, we just let him kind of walk off scotch-free? I feel like you, he'd just be attacked. That's honestly. what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. And also, in either way, it wouldn't just be social media attacking him. It would be lawyers and mm-hmm. judges and people coming in from different states saying, I want to put this back on trial because it's not right. Um, but I, we don't know really what happened to him significantly as far as when he was released from the um, mental health institution, as well as when he was in there. So saying Scott, like, walked off scotch-free could be wrong wording for that. We have no idea what he went through. But in terms of people who get life sentences, like Ted Bundy died in jail. And so a lot of people did have to go through the process of the... Um, the police district as far as their crimes were being committed, but he, he didn't have that same treatment. And so I think that's what makes this case really interesting. I think just insanity in general, it's hard to tell, like really what's going on inside someone's head, right? We can't tell, like maybe this guy really did was good. He he had multiple personalities and he couldn't control it. Or maybe he was just making it up. And there are cases of that today. We see that a lot. Um, but Pleading insanity, I also do have to say that I know of cases where people do lie and they say, if you've ever been to a therapist before, if you've ever had mental health issues, then I can probably get you off on insanity. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, 
people are really, if you see that your case is going the wrong way and you still need to make money off of this, don't want to profit from it being like a defense lawyer or something like that. There's no telling what you'll do, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think it just shows like our legal system and just some stuff that could be wrong with it, uh, maybe could be right with that, I don't know, but just an interesting way that people can plead to get off their sentence. And this was the first case of this ever happening before, the first case of anyone pleading insanity. So I just, I think it's really interesting that someone kind of picked this up and was like, you know, we claim to own our thoughts and our thoughts are, are who make us up as human beings. And so if we can't control our thoughts, do we technically still own them? So it's an interesting concept that someone had to think of is that if I can't control these thoughts, are they still legally attached to me? Yeah, this case was a very uncharted territory, as you said. Just Definitely. Like, I've never been done before. 24 I mean, personalities. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can barely handle the one personality. <laughs> so I just think that it's really interesting. And like you said previously, one of these personalities was like a 14-year-old female child from... You, uh... Just her, her not, name is Alana. Yeah, yeah, not from yeah. the United States, yeah. right? And so I think that that's just, you know, really interesting. And also, if this was the first case, I don't think that you could make something like that up. And that must have been, I mean, sure, sure you can, but it's pro not probable, right? Um, and so I think it's really interesting that this just came to a judge, was presented to a judge, and then it became a part of the legal trial that was later reached as the verdict. Interesting. <laughs> I'm going to ask you just a question right now. So sure. do you think it's justified to plead insanity? Like, yes or no? To justify, is to it justified to plead, plead insanity? insanity? Yeah. E hmm, that's a loaded question. Yeah. Um, but you have to think about Billy Milligan. Mm -hmm. If I if put yourself in his shoes, me personally, if I had 23 other personalities than the one I'm in right now, and I didn't have any control of what they did, yes, I would say that it is fair to plead insanity mm -hmm. in cases like that. Because it's like being wrongfully convicted, except you're, all of the evidence is against you because technically you, you did it. Yeah. But you still feel wronged by this because... There's no control. You, there is no real treatment for DID. I mean, there are special specialties that you can go to, like you can see a psychiatrist, you can see all sorts of psychotherapy, but there's no medication that you can take that says we got rid of them all. It's like an eraser on pen, right? You mm -hmm. can't do that really. So I think, but then there are people who lie about it. Yeah. But like, that's, that's the world we live in right now is that there are liars when it comes to everything. So I do think it's fair. What about you? <laughs> so I'm going to take the other side on this. One. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I think that it's, you, you no one should be able to plead insanity because just not because they couldn't control what they're doing, but like based on what if it happens again, if it happened once they could theoretically do this again. And like, is it safe for them to be out? Uh, with the big community, with this all that's going on, is it safe for them? Is it safe for other people? But then he but went it, to a mental health institution. He did, but then he was. But then released. he was released. I know what you mean by yeah. that, and especially because there's not as there's not enough government funding for mm -hmm. to like keep someone in yeah. a mental health institution for that long to get them to continually see therapists. And we don't have a lot of therapy, to be honest. Like we need more of that, and so I see what you mean. Like. Mm -hmm not enough yeah. and their potential danger i get that because yeah. i mean if one personality did it there's no telling what the other ones could do as long as as well as the other personality mm -hmm. um so i definitely see what you mean by that what does insanity versus insanity entail i mean i think insanity is relative to i, I mean Ex I, that, expound right, on I'm, that yeah i'm gonna expand <laughs> on that a little bit but we all look at other people that may, may, we might think they're insane, right? Mm -hmm. But they can be looking at us right now, and they can think we're insane. I mean, it's just like to, conformity. Yeah, like some people who live in rural parts of the state could be looking at people who live, like you and me, who live in the city, saying they're insane for living in this. Like they obviously there's something going on in their brain that's making them want to live this. Yeah, I mean, 
conformed lifestyle, but then we look at them and we say, you're insane for not having a grocery store two minutes away from your house, you know? So, I mean, I think just all humans are different, right? And we all put ourselves in like little groups. And it just so happens that the majority of people we see these other people as insane and we are sane. It's like... Kind of, it, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's the... Do we have the definition of insanity too? The dictionary definition of insanity is extreme foolishness or not being, or being irrational. That's, again, yeah, really relative. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's also, that's what becomes tricky with this trial and future people being able to plead insanity because you can't just, it's like when you give a kid a cracker and then you say, oh, but none of the other kids in the classroom can have a cracker too. So if you were to just let him plead insanity and then there's some, like a hundred different people that come into this trial and they have different personality disorders as well. They have depression, they have whatever they want to plead. You can't just say, oh no, that was just that one case. You know, you have to start going in depth into it and saying, these are the guidelines we put out now. So that's another idea of like, was he sane? Was he <laughs> insane? Will other people be sane? I mean, I think mental mental health is just becoming a lot more like socially acceptable thing in like the past Something recent years. Respected. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's more treatments for it. There's more resources because, like, in the olden days, like if you had if you had a mental health is like seen, you were like thrown out. Yeah, you Walk were it exiled. Off. Yeah. you're you're gone. But now it's definitely in our society. It's a lot more accepted, and I think it's a really good thing in general. I think it's definitely also because we have social media and Mm -hmm. people are able to talk about it more. Mm -hmm. And so the more we talk about it, the more we learn about it, the more we're able to sympathize and say. And respect other people. No, exactly. So um, do people with personality disorders have enough resources to reach out? There's, (laughs) so there's different treatments. There's a treatment called talk therapy, which is where they can go to specialists and just talk about what they're experiencing and that can lead the specialists to help them definitely a lot more. There's cognitive behavioral therapy. There's the psychotherapy, family therapy. And they're d- different specialists. But there's no specific specialist for these multiple personality disorders. There's clinical psychologist and psychiat- uh, psychiatric help. But there's no... We don't have any like direct specialists for this. And if you Google just multiple personality disorder, you Google DID... The Mayo Clinic comes up with how to tell if you have it. WebMD comes up with a direct definition of it. Uh, Wikipedia, Cleveland Clinic. But there's no line out there saying if you need help, if you need someone to talk to, no one's coming out. Yeah, I think part of the reason for that is just DID is just so rare. I mean, Mm -hmm. I just looked this up. I'm pulling it from the Cleveland Clinic and only 0.01% of the population has been diagnosed with DID. Seriously? Yeah. So like very, very few people have yeah but like that's true and then there you know we could also say why aren't there any specific therapists for anxiety or Mm -hmm. specific therapists for depression um and it would be interesting if we had specific therapy for something that rarely exists Mm -hmm. and not for something that is touched by a lot of people um but still There's a question, I mean, we'll never know, to be honest, but there is a question of if there were more resources out there during this time, this was like the 1970s, right? During this time, if there were more resources for him to reach out to, if mental health wasn't such a taboo topic, could we have prevented some of these crimes to be committed? So I think that's a big, important topic that we talk about mental health because no one knows and this is really interesting. I watched like a TED talk on this one time. <laughs> this is really interesting. Someone brought this up. You'll never know. I, Jacob, you will never know what I'm thinking right now. And That's I true. will never know what you're thinking. You could tell me what you're thinking, but I wouldn't know if you're lying or not. We can get into other people's heads. We, we don't know what other people are experiencing. Their exactly. Lives. And until, and I don't know if we'll ever have the technology for that. I mean, we probably wouldn't know that we yes. are here today recording a podcast on things that used to be cassette tapes you know um but it's still crazy to think about like if mental health isn't talked about it becomes something to shy away from instead of something to be like okay so we haven't had this conversation that doesn't mean that it's not meant to be had Mm -hmm. so i think that definitely plays into it um and then there's also the price and accessibility of therapy 
Oh boy. Have That's, you ever been to therapy? I've never been to therapy. I've been to therapy really... four times. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. For different for different reasons though, because sometimes therapy is so expensive, Jacob. It's so expensive. Um, there are school counselors. I there mean, is. you can go to school yeah. counselors, but even they have things to deal with. Right now, um, our school counselors have like over a thousand students trying to get their schedule planned out for next year. Most of them ninth graders that have never done this before. And then some of the, like you and I were taking AP classes. That's mm -hmm. our first time taking an AP. Well, not you, but like <laughs> first, a lot of people first time taking an AP mm -hmm. class. And it, so they have a lot on their plate. And so if you also wanted to go to someone that could spend an hour with you in depth conversation, not just 20 minutes about whatever you're dealing with a licensed professional, this is this is insane. I just looked it up. I it know I can see your face. Three hundred to five hundred dollars yeah. for one visit yeah. for an hour. That's crazy. Oh Imagine yeah. You sit in there and talk to them for one hour. They're taking notes on a notepad. It's yeah. not like you're getting medication or mm -hmm. treatment there. No, yeah. You're just talking to them. And the and medication is extra. It, it's extra. It's yeah. an extra price. It's for your pharmacist. Three hundred to five hundred dollars. Oh, that's what? crazy. And then can you imagine getting diagnosed with medication, going to your pharmacist, and then them saying? All right, this is like an eighty dollar plus charge, on yeah. top of the therapy you're going to. That's around four hundred dollars an hour that you're spending with them. Okay, and then yeah, they write the stuff on the little notepad. They give you the notepad. Yeah. You get to look at their notes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You're paying like eight dollars a minute to sit in that room. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just did that math. Very quick math, guys. Yeah. I, I, just, and yeah. then also. I mean, I know that like recently I looked up how many therapists we have in Carlsbad that can talk to us. Not only is the fee that expensive, there are maybe, th I think there are three clinics in Carlsbad. Three clinics in Carlsbad for the amount of people living here is not enough. I mean, I, I think therapy is just such, still such a taboo subject in a society. A lot of people you know? judge each other yeah. for going to therapy. Therapies, I, it's great. Honestly, mm -hmm. it does wonders for people. Mm -hmm. I have seen people completely turn around mm -hmm. with the things they've been diagnosed with simply by having, because a lot of people don't have anyone to talk to. And that's what the big thing is, is that yeah. therapy is someone to talk to. I just wish they weren't trying to $400 yeah. to talk to someone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so four times, okay? Yeah. Four different times for four different prices. And I can tell you the more, the less expensive ones that I've gone to, the very skyrocketed, more expensive people I've gone to ultimately have done less things for me. Mm -hmm. I've gone to a therapist that was like, she was licensed and she worked at my old school, but she didn't like have her own practice or anything. So I didn't have to pay any money to go see her. And she couldn't give me medication, obviously, or any advice. Um, she was the best like person I've ever gone to. I have just a question. I don't know if you know this or not, but is therapy covered by insurance? Or... So it depends on what you're going through. Because mm -hmm. I know that um, for like someone with DID to go see someone, to go see a therapist, the insurance is going to kind of help a little bit. Mm -hmm. But with someone with more of a relative... Like you, okay, so the thing is you have to go to your doctor mm -hmm. and get it diagnosed. And a lot of websites do say this. They have the little fine print that says it's going to be less expensive. It'll be covered if you have a, like a, a paper that you can bring in that says I have been diagnosed, which means you are also taking more money mm -hmm. to go, to go to see a doctor, a doctor yeah. to get diagnosed for That's this. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you have to go in there get a diagnosis. And so if you have something that's more relative, like anxiety or depression something that yes can be like uh what a diagnose it can be diagnosed by someone mm -hmm. still going in there a lot of people have depression anxiety there are more steps you have to go through and mm -hmm. so also a lot of people i didn't know until very recently like maybe in the last year that you had to be diagnosed in order to get it covered by a healthcare professional. I mean, I think that's just such a problem, just making therapy so hard to reach for someone. And either people. way, yeah. most people don't have a lot of insurance. Yeah, exactly. Rarely people have insurance. Uh, especially now. if you have a mental disorder. I mean, exactly. Because uh, yeah. you're already paying for the medication. You're already trying to make your way, trying to survive with this mental health disorder. Mm -hmm. 
and then someone adds on, hey, by the way, it's like a $500 charge because you have to get the medication for it. You have to go see someone for it. You have to get it diagnosed so that you can go see someone for it. And that's why it's taboo because yeah. no one wants to talk about it because it's such a stressor because it's something we have to deal with instead of something that we have access to, something that we have to survive through. <laughs> I mean, that's, yeah, I it's mean, uh it's pretty it's i think it could probably definitely solve a lot a lot a lot of problems in society if it were therapy which if it was talked about and talked about and accessible accessible yeah. exactly and obviously like bigger cities will have more therapy and more yeah. people to help them mm -hmm. but a lot still there are still people living in the smaller cities so still people that need help you know mm -hmm. and so i just I mean, I think, I hope we're moving towards the right direction. I mean, I know I get ads a lot for, like, We did better kind help, of, yeah, like, walk through a little bit. Yeah. Like, online, maybe? That can be the next Better help. Thing. I have yeah. seen ads about that. Yeah. I did, um, I did. We're not sponsoring this, by the way. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a good concept, yeah. though, to be able to go see someone online yeah. about that. And I don't want to, like, turn this into a cliche. Talking to family and friends mm -hmm. is very important. I mean, just people They're, that you trust. They aren't licensed. That's true. They can't give you any, like, serious medication or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. But it's someone to talk to. Mm -hmm. Don't turn to Google. Google is not your friend. Turn to family. Go see, go see your doctor. <laughs> it's yeah. difficult sometimes. Sometimes we can't afford it. And it's, like, the last option. But it shouldn't be the last option. Not really. Mm -hmm. Um... So I think that's what we wanted to talk about today. We wanted to talk, we went over uh, whether it should be justified to plead insanity. What does sanity versus insanity entail? Do people with personality disorders have enough resources to re reach out? And the price slash ex accessibility of therapy. So I'm not giving something to think about. Yeah, thanks for listening. The story of a convicted felon with 24 alternate personalities comes to a close. Be sure to check out our previous episodes on the Idaho student murders and Jody and Saren. We'll see you next time on The Case Files. Mm -hmm.